Hello, my name is Joakim Åklund from Sweden and you're watching Trucker Josh Vlogs. Nice and toasty warm. Thanks, old blue, for keeping me warm. I'll take a quick look, make sure no one's cutting my straps or messing with my load or my truck or anything. And we'll be off. We have to deliver just on the south end of Fargo here. Oh, fresh air and diesel fumes. Or is it diesel fumes and fresh air? Or is it just diesel fumes? Ah, oh, whatever it is, it's great. I lost my hub cover somewhere. I noticed that last night. I bought a new one already. I'm gonna replace that. These are wall panels. Not sure what they're building. But all the straps are still tight. All still in place as they should be. Wonderful. Lights are all working. Wonderful. Wonderful. There's a lot of snow on this side here. The tire's still filled with that premium winter air. Nice. I had them changed out. I still had summer air in there. Good thing I did because it was a really cold night. You want to have good winter air in your tires. Oh, okay. It's still a little cold out there. No such thing as winter air. <laughs> I get some of you with that every time. The rest of you are rolling your eyes because I use that joke every winter, but. I got some of you thinking, what? Right? Come on, I have to at least get one of you. My dogs think I'm funny. Rock and roll. Roll and rock. Rock and roll and rock and roll. Roll and roll and rocking and rolling. A little tug test to make sure my eyes did not deceive me. One sec. Trailer is attached. I knew it. Yes. All right. Brakes are releasing as well. Fantastic. Ah, this poor guy. Hopefully he gets his truck fixed. Oh, look at that step on the bottom there. Bud, while it's in the shop, get him to fix that step. we go <clears throat> man it was a very dry night that's for sure I'm not used to it being so dry ah. it 
feel it in my throat. Do another new day, and we're going trucking. Man, it's gonna be a good day. This guy just dropped his trailer here in the driveway. That's not a parking spot. I'm not even close. That guy's not even a parking spot. He just dropped his trailer right here in the middle of the driveway. That guy's going camping. Good for you, buddy. You're braver than me. He's actually a transporter. He's just bringing it to the dealership. Can you imagine camping in this weather? Yikes. There are people that do it. A lot of people, actually, uh, some people that we even know. They just call it ice fishing. They go camping out on the lake. Build a little hut on the lake, on the ice, and you know, they have a little fire in there, a little wood stove or something, and it doesn't melt the ice. You know, you think it would, right? Freaks me out. I've never done it. But yeah, there's a lot of people, they stay out on the ice overnight, or they stay out all day. They live and eat in there, and they fish through a little hole in the ice. If I can drop a blade in the driveway. What did he say? <laughs> was he talking about that trailer that was dropped in the middle of the driveway too? I don't know, couldn't hear it. Oh, if he dropped the blade in this driveway, maybe that's what he's talking about, it's a bumpy driveway. That's why I don't like CBs. You can never really tell what people are saying, right? You know they're saying something, but. And I even have the same accent as the guys up here, so I can understand them better up here. But if I go down south, there's no hope that I'm gonna understand anything that they're saying on the CB down there. What? Yeah, I'm not a big fan of CB radios. I have mine in here now. I actually ri rode without one for years and years, but since we got old blue, I figure she deserves a CB in here. And I have it on, it's nice to talk to uh, people that pass by if they recognize my truck or some of my coworkers. Oh, so it's been a net positive for me. But I find it very hard to, uh, to understand what people are saying. That next door is a Walmart super center. So you know this is a good neighborhood. We're building that. Isn't that cool? Well, they're building that, but I'm bringing them the stuff for it. Looks like they're putting up the fourth story. I'm wondering how many stories high can you go with just a wood frame? They're going up to level four here and it looks like the, actually it looks like the rafters or trusses are being put up on top of that. So maybe four will be the top or are they just finishing the third floor on the other side? I don't know. This guy's unloading me over here. And that freight right there, that's my freight. That's my freight. Well, now it's theirs. It was mine for a short time. We had fun. Traveled through the bitter cold tundra of Manitoba and North Dakota to get here to the bitter cold of Fargo, North Dakota. This is the second apartment building that I've seen come up like this. There's tons of them. So this is Walmart on the south end of town. Uh, I think that's 52nd Street right there. If you look at a map of uh, of Fargo, you'll see this is on the south end of town. Right behind me, running this way, is I-29. I-29 past, past the I-94 south of town. You'll see the Walmart here. And this is a whole new development. On Google Maps, it's just a big open field huge neighborhood and development coming up here and trucker Josh was a part of putting it together well he's bringing in the Calvary Calvary has arrived Calvary Cavill Cavalry Calvary Cavalry the Cavalry is here <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about most days the two of them now that are going to be unloading me. Wow, I feel special. I'm getting a lot of attention today. He's dropping my stuff over there. I'm staying in the truck right now to stay out of their way. 
and also because I don't want to freeze. There's that also. Close right. So you got the little skid steer unloading the little stuff on the back. You got this big guy here unloading one of the top pieces. And as soon as they got that, uh, he's got it lifted up there. Can you see it in the mirror? As soon as he's got it off of there, I'm going to quickly jump out and grab my tarps that are on top of this lower level up front. I got to grab those because those are mine. And there he goes. You are mine. You belong to me. Come. Come, my children. Come. Come here. Come here before I start swearing at you. Come here. Oh, they're like rock hard because they're frozen. Ouch. Oh. Frozen solid. That's lovely. We're gonna get you off before he comes back. Come here. Come here. Okay. Oh no. Okay, good. I'm gonna lean these up here. We'll put them back on the trailer deck once, once we're done. Okay. Man, these things are not working with me. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Stay. All right. Stay clear of that area there, just in case, you never know. So I had both of these closed up yesterday. It was so cold. It's about minus 20 Celsius outside right now. So uh, I opened up these top two. There is no like real right or wrong way of dealing with this and not every winter cover is the same. So eh, just sort of play it by, just eyeball it. If your water's getting too hot, open them up. If it's getting too cold, close them up. There they go. Like I've said before, while I'm stopped here, even though it's cold outside, I have uh, it's an engine heater that keeps my engine warm and a bunk heater that keeps my cab warm. Though it's getting pretty hot in here right now, I think the sensor for that bunk heater is like on the outside wall. And the outside walls are sometimes a little cooler than the air inside here. I have it turned all the way down and it's just blasting me with hot air. I'm actually gonna open the window a little bit. I'm actually a little warm. Let's get out of here. I have an empty step deck behind me. I'm headed back for a new load on the other side of the border. There's a couple that they're sort of working on right now. I'm not sure exactly which one uh, is gonna be mine, but we'll figure that out later. I'm hoping I can make it around this corner here. This is an extremely tight little corner. Yikes can't hit this snowbank here or I'm gonna push my bumper in. Okay, I think we're good. We're good. Okay. This way now. Lots of space. Tell me I can't do it, I'll show you I can. I got in here, that means I can get out.
Fargo, North Dakota. That building, I helped build it. Couldn't have done it without me. <laughs> All right. Let's go to Flying J, swing in there for a coffee, and uh, make our way back north. I they need to clear this a little bit better here. This is extremely narrow. I'm gonna need to take it wide to get around this. And this is a busy intersection here. Okay, go this way. This way. Oh yeah, plenty of room, plenty of room. We're supposed to be getting a snowstorm here today yet, so I want to get out of here. This autumn season. <clears throat> this fall season has just been nothing but snow up here. Snow, snow, and more snow. Now that you're watching this, it's officially winter now though, right? So now winter has finally begun. December 21st was the first day of winter. Interstate 29 North. Oh, it's slippery here. I've got no weight on my trailer, so Old Blue is just... Uh, Struggling a little bit here to gain some speed. In 300 meters, check the entrance to the ride on by 29 North US 81 North. Some of you have been asking recently, uh, a lot of Europeans wondering what we do for winter with our tires. We run the same tires year round here. They're very expensive. My drive tires are probably four to five hundred dollars each. My steer tires are about nine hundred dollars each, unless if those prices have gone up recently, which is probably the case. To replace all of your drives in the back, all eight tires, you're looking at four to $5,000. So nobody is gonna buy a set of winter tires and a set of summer tires. And you're spending $10,000 on rubber. No, you'll just buy tires that are uh, all, all season. And these tires do good in the winter. You, you wanna get tires that are, are good for fuel economy, but also have good bite. They can bite into the snow, you know? The owner before me, put Firestone tires on this truck. Uh, they've actually been performing really well for me. I'm, I actually kind of like them. I've never had them before. These are low profiles. Uh, I usually stick with Michelin or BF Goodrich myself. The steer tires on the truck right now are, are Michelin. Those are the best steer tires you can get. taking off uh, the 23rd to uh, next week after Boxing Day, the 28th. Uh, but there's nothing left for me to do this week. There's no work. Everybody, all the warehouses and customers and receivers and shippers are all shutting down for the holiday season. And there's nowhere for us to go get freight and deliver it to. Everything's shutting down for Christmas. And I don't blame them. Any other time of year, I'd be like, ah, oh, come on. No, this is Christmas, it's very important. Uh, I wasn't gonna work for today and tomorrow yet, but it is what it is. It's the Christmas season and it's very important to me. So we will make it work. We will be at all the Christmas gatherings. This Christmas is about family. That's the biggest part of Christmas. You're supposed to be together with your family. It's more important than everything else going on in your life. You put everything else aside in this season and you come spend time with your family. I'm fortunate, I like my family, both sides, I really do. So it's not difficult for me to say, all right, we're putting everything aside. It's okay that I don't got any work right now. I'm, I'm giving up work. I probably could have work if I wanted to work through the through Christmas, but there's no way I'm missing these family gatherings. So, as soon as we get back to the shop, we are officially on Christmas holidays. 
we want to park Old Blue with full tanks so she's nice and happy and well fed. She deserves Christmas dinner too. You done good, Old Blue. It was a cold ride, but you uh, you did your job. You did very good. Very nice. Oh, I know what we can do. I can install my new steering wheel that I got from Jim and a uh, uh, new, uh, let me show you, let me show you. I have it with me because I was hoping to be able to install it on the road, but uh, I didn't have the time. Check it out. Woo Thanks, Jim. Look at that. That's going to be my, my new steering wheel and I have a matching uh, shifter to match. Match this. Exactly, uh, exactly what I wanted. This is exactly the steering wheel I was looking at getting. So, 18 inch. And don't forget about those train horns. I have not forgotten about those. I have a plan for them. Don't worry. So after Christmas, I'm going to be running very hard. Very, very hard. Because mid-March, I'm starting my paternal leave. So I'm taking four to six weeks in uh, from March 17th to the end of April or uh, whenever we're comfortable with me leaving after the after we have the baby. It's our first baby. We have a lot of learning to do. Uh, it's gonna be quite busy, maybe a little overwhelming, especially for Britt. She's not planning on getting a C-section, but if she does end up needing one, uh, there's gonna be, uh, I'm gonna need to stay a little longer to help her because uh, her body has to heal up. She can't do any lifting or anything. So I gotta be there to help her with that. But uh, yeah, so after Christmas, once Christmas vacation is over, good movie, good movie. We gotta watch that tonight. But once Christmas holidays are over, I'm gonna be running my, my royal tail off until mid-March so that we can afford to have me off the road for up to six weeks. We can do it, we can do it, but uh, I'm gonna have to work hard for it. So I may have to miss a few of the appointments leading up to the birth. She's due on April 1st and I plan to park the truck March 17th, it's a Friday. So for two weeks before the birth, just in case it's early and four weeks after, uh, I'm planning on being home. And all the vlogs for those six weeks will be revolving around the baby. So now the tanks are topped up, we're ready to go home for Christmas vacation. Merry Christmas to each and every one of you. Have I said that yet? Merry Christmas to you sitting right there. I hope you have something big or fun planned for the Christmas season. It's the best time of year. Okay, talking fuel right now. I want to talk about the difference between fuel prices in the US as opposed to Canada. More specifically, North Dakota and Manitoba. Now here in Manitoba, the diesel price has been around $2.06 per liter consistently for about a month now, about that. And that's where it's sitting at right now. I'm paying $2.06 per liter, which is $1.51 USD per liter. So US dollar, USD, <coughs> $1.50. And uh, you times that by 3.785, which is one US gallon, we're paying $5.72 per gallon, per US gallon. So converted to US dollars, we're paying $5.72 per gallon, US gallon, here. 60 miles that way is a Love's Travel Center, and then there's a Flying J, about 100 miles down in Grand Forks. They're paying $4.05 per US gallon. Why is it so much more expensive here? Like, it, it, it is always more expensive in Canada than it is in the US, that's always just a given. But why is it right now such a huge gap? Like, that's a dollar 67 US per US gallon difference here. What? Just to go to Fargo and back? costs me $100 more each way. So it's $200 more of my money, Canadian money, than it would be fueling in the States. I just don't like fueling down there. 
in this season because it gets so cold and the biodiesel that they use down there is a different mixture than the clear diesel we use up here it's not as good for cold temperatures and it gels up easier even their winter diesel number one so I, I like to fuel up up here is it that much more expensive because of the winter mixture we have up here is that the only reason or what's going on here we're usually pretty close within like you know 10 to 20 cents per liter the u.s what they're paying 60 miles that way a dollar 45 canadian per liter for diesel fuel a dollar 45 with all the conversions and everything done we're paying two dollars and six cents here two dollars and five cents whatever i said before two dollars and six cents why 60 cent per liter difference i need answers who's got the answers for that one that's a ridiculous gap 60 miles apart an imaginary line between us Let's be real, it's a real line, but you can't see it, right? It's, you get it. What? They're gonna make us pay for the good stuff. $1.45 a liter over there. That's still too expensive, just to let you know. It should be more around about a dollar to 80 cents to a dollar, and then I'll start getting happy. It should be closer, you know, to 50 cents, but you know, maybe I'm just getting old. I remember the good old days when, you know, it was like 50 cents a liter for diesel. You know, $2.05. I've never seen the gap that big between the two countries. The, wow. Summertime, I guarantee you, I will be fueling in the United States absolutely every chance I get. And I'm not done complaining and ranting yet. The rant is going on further. We're going to find out what my average fuel amount is. Okay, I'm going to speak in Canadian here just because it's what I'm more familiar with. So let's say 500 liters, okay? Let's pick our nice even number. Even more than that, 550 liters, okay? That would be about a regular fill up for me. Now, to fill my truck up with 550 liters, which is 342 US gallons. Okay, so 550 liters times 60 cents costs me an extra $330 on a regular average fuel up, to fuel up up here. And an extra $330 every time. And that's about every day if I'm running hard. That's a tough pill to swallow. And I'm just finding this out now, just right now with you. That can't be. That can't be. There's got to be something wrong in my calculations. $330 more every time I fuel up from, from about a quarter tank. I mean, you would think that I'm putting straight liquid gold into my tanks for that price, right? I'm going to be thinking and pondering on this. I'm doing some serious recalibrations in here. These prices have got to come down in Canada. They've got to come down. Gasoline has started to come down. Hello, what about diesel fuel? Okay, I'm done complaining for now, and rant is complete. Let's go home. Old Blue, you did good. You did good. And I'm home now for the holidays. And I'm very excited about that. I got a marker light down here replaced just now. This one was, uh, the wires had ripped off of it, so it's working again, but it's good to be home. This is the hub that uh, fell off. Did I show you this before? I already got a new one on the passenger side. I'm going to replace that this weekend as well. I got it right here. Right there, I'm going to replace both of them. Because that fell off and this one has dents in it, and that's unacceptable. That's been there for since I bought the truck, but hope you have a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, old boy. Behind that door is my welcome home. Are you guys ready?
You too, buddy. I missed you too. Diesel, come here. Diesel, come show me your rope. This is my rope with the eyes. Diesel, come here. Hey, Diesel, come here. Show me your rope. What's this? What's this? Oh my goodness. What is this? You got this big rope? You think it's yours? You think it's yours? What if it's mine? What if it's mine? Oh, Chevy thinks it's his. Ah. Oh, he's so angry. So passionate. So passionate. Ah. Okay, guys. Well. 